All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us today on today's webinar about maximizing your short tail investment. Uh, today we are going to be covering some great things uh, about Vertex, but also we have a special demonstration uh, with Bright Metrics, which is a, a service with the short tail system that will allow you to get some great information and additional reports that don't come uh, standard with your setup. So we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, with our presentation today and our webinar. Uh, so again, thanks for attending, and we're going to go over some things that are happening at Vertex. We've got some great news on, on what's going on here. Cover some uh, information on the Shortel 14.2. If you aren't already on 14.2, we definitely uh, want to get you on 14.2. There's some great features there as well. And then we're going to go in right into the Bright Metrics demonstration with uh, Jim Lewis, the CEO of Bright Metrics, is here with us. Uh, Jim, if you want to say hi, you're more than welcome to do that now. Hi, everybody. And then right after that, uh, we're going to go into a question and answer session for you, and also we're going to talk about our next webinar that's coming up. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure everybody's aware of, uh, stick around after the Bright Metrics demonstration that we have coming up for you. There is a special offer out there for you, so we want to make sure that you all are aware of what's coming on uh, with Bright Metrics. So, what's going on at Vertex? We've got some great news. Uh, as of August 12th, uh, Vertex Consulting was named the Shortel GovEd Partner of the Year for Florida. Uh, so, we have been the number one government and education partner for Florida, and we were just recognized for that from Shortel. Uh, something else that we're looking for here at Vertex, we are looking for a new account manager. So if you have anybody that you know that might be interested in that type of role, uh, have them reach out to us. We'll be happy to pass along the information to uh, our CEO, Don Gulling. Uh, we are now set up as a Bright Metrics partner. We are utilizing the Bright Metrics reporting tool uh, here at Vertex as well. There's some great information that you can pull to see how efficiently you are using uh, your short tail system and how you're uh, your sales staff or your contact center is uh, performing uh, in line with your SLAs. One quick reminder on the quickest way to get support from Vertex, if you need immediate assistance and you have an urgent matter, please, please, please call our main phone number. There's two phone numbers you can call. Our 800 number is 877-837-8357, extension one, I mean, my extension is 1477, but it hit uh, option number three for support and someone will be glad to be taking care of you immediately. If you have an issue that you can uh, maybe wait a few hours to maybe a day, send an email to help at vertex.com. This will automatically create a ticket in our uh, ticketing system. You'll be notified and someone will follow up with you usually within an hour to get that. And as a reminder, our next webinar is coming up on December 17th and we're going to be talking about contact center basics. So uh, enterprise contact center versus work groups, what the differences are, uh, and how those might help you. So what are some of the things that Vertex does as well? Obviously, we're a short tail partner. Uh, that's why we're all here today. But we also do disaster recovery planning with Quorum. We do Office 365, uh, Datto, Bright Metrics, obviously, is here today, uh, a life-size partner for video conferencing as well, and then wireless with uh, uh, Blue Socket, AdTran, and also Ruckus. Uh, so some of the things that we're out there as well. Uh, keep us in mind if you want some, some help, guidance, or information on any of those uh, items you're looking for. So what's going on in 14.2? Virtualization is the name of the game. If you're not aware of what's going on with 14.2, there's some great options to virtualize appliances with VMware. Some of the servers that are uh, supported for 14.2 that has changed a little bit, 2008 R2, uh, standard and enterprise is supported and also 2012 standard and data center, and we are also compatible with IE 10 and 11 for your shoreware director. Some of the feature summaries, obviously we talked about the virtual phone switches that can be done in VMware. Uh, virtual IP phone switch and spare phone switch, free of charge, so you can do an N plus one redundancy on your system, free of charge, no licensing required, no hardware required. Also a virtual SIP trunk switch, the virtual service appliance, which is the SA100, SA400 type of device, you can now put that in there and get free instant messaging. It used to be a charged uh, item for you guys. Now it's a free IM by virtualizing that appliance. And also you can virtualize the gate separator that is sold by Shortel. They run as OVA files on your VMware infrastructure. So some of the great things on there from a virtualization standpoint, 
Here is some of the information on what those switches will entail as far as capacities are concerned. Uh, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and read that yourselves for just a moment. Uh, you don't need me to read that for you. Do now. I'm going to hand it over to uh, to Jim Lewis. Uh, Jim co-founded Bright Metrics after 15 years' experience running high-tech service companies. And as a CEO, Jim spent years looking for tools to help him understand the underlying trends of his business, so he could see beyond the monthly financial statements and sales reports. He joined CEO groups, read widely, and talked with many other CEOs, but no one seemed to have the answer. So in the end, Jim decided to sell his IT service firm in order to focus on creating the product he's been looking for. The result is Bright Metrics. Jim leads the company and is responsible for product vision, marketing, and sales. And I'm gonna, before I hand it over to Jim, one more reminder just to stick around after the demonstration for a, a new offer with the Bright Metrics setup. So I'm gonna hand presentation over to Jim and let Jim go ahead and take over from there. Beautiful, thanks so much, Jeff. Uh, so again, my name is uh, my name's Jim Lewis. I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, so I'm sharing that, and if you, if you can't see that, please let me know. But uh, I'm with Bright Metrics, and what we do is uh, reporting and uh, analytics. I think, I think uh, more importantly, at, at the very least, more uniquely, analytics for the Shortel system. Uh, if you're on this, uh, on this webinar, it's likely you've made a, a sizable investment in, in a Shortel system. And congratulations on that. It's a fantastic system. But any phone system out there, unless you have a way to really get at the data in an easy and intuitive way, uh, you're, you're really probably only getting half of the value proposition for that system. Uh, you know, half of the return on investment can be, can, from, from any kind of a system today comes from the data that it collects and how you can use that in your company to uh, to give yourselves insights into staffing levels and customer satisfaction metrics and employee productivity and employee training and hopefully that's what I'm going to show you here today I'm going to go through this uh, relatively quickly because the goal of this session isn't to get you to buy bright metrics the goal of this session is just to get you to take a look at bright metrics as a free trial uh, no commitment for your company and it takes just a few minutes to get bright metrics set at your company the guys at vertex can do that all for you And when you do we're happy to do another one-on-one -on -one demo session with you where we're working with your own data and I guarantee you we'll show you things in that data that you weren't even aware were happening within your company uh, and, and it happens all the time and uh, and and that's what uh, that's what we do for a living is to get you that information that is buried deep in that phone system and bring it out. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, what, what I have on my screen right here happens to be around a particular Shortel work group. So this is a small call center, the basic call center I see. The next webinar is going to be on uh, Shortel's uh, enterprise contact center versus their work groups. Uh, and, and we support both of those. This is around a work group, but uh, you can see here we work with uh, Shortel's enterprise con center contact center product we can give you insights into uh, even system information like trunk utilization uh, or hunt groups or DID volumes a lot of people from marketing want to know what certain DIDs are, are getting the most volumes of calls or where those calls are going in their system or individual users you name it if the data lives in the short system we can get you the same kind of analytics that I'm going to show you today a lot of people use us in that small call center or even larger call center environments around work groups and ECC. So that's where I'm going to focus today. <clears throat> but we can do any of the data that's in the Shortel system. Uh, and you can see from our dashboard here that we have, you, you know, all the different features of a dashboarding tool that you would expect, right? So I'm looking at my call count by exit reason, how are calls leaving the queue when they come in, or the calls by agent, uh, how many calls are each agent taken, and I'm looking here over 30 days, but everything here is completely customizable from how the charts look to adding different charts to a dashboard and removing charts to selecting different date ranges for each individual chart. 
whatever you want. You can do period over period call volume comparisons. What was my call volume on a day by day this quarter versus last quarter or hour by hour this week versus last week. Um, and, and so the charts really give you this really high level overview, right? So I can say, hey, look, I see this spike in, in Q time here. Uh, actually yesterday where we spiked up to 30 seconds on average where we're typically down around that you know sub 10 second uh, queue time but I want to know what exactly was going on yesterday and what happened here so I can actually click here and it marks that as a red line and now every other time series chart on the page I get that same mark so I do see a little bit of a spike in my transfer to agent calls I also I see a little bit of a spike in my abandon rate. It's telling it's talking to me about now my elasticity uh, around abandon rates versus uh, versus queue time. So I can see that when I spike up here, I do spike a little bit comparatively in abandon rate, but I'm still well within a normal range of abandoned calls. Right for abandoned calls, we want to see, you know. Somewhere in general, uh, we want to see somewhere between four and eight percent abandon rates. If you go up above eight percent, you're starting to have some customer satisfaction issues likely. If you go down below four percent, you probably have too many, uh, too much in the way of costs in your data center, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But you can kind of see these charts and dashboards give you this five mile high overview where we're looking for trends and patterns and anomalies. And uh, so I'm going to actually drill down into some of these charts. So you can see, and this is where Bright Metrics becomes really unique in the space. And by the way, these charts can all be put up on wall boards. They update automatically. Um, we have a module around real time now if you want to uh, see, hey, what is going on with my uh, my work group real time. How many calls are in queue right now? What is every agent doing? What's the status of each agent? Are they on a call? Are they logged out? You know, a, a, anything you'd want to know about what's happening right now, or or like we see here, historical reporting around, hey, what was happening in the last hour, or yesterday, or last week, or last year. Um, but Again, what makes Bright Metrics unique is in our ability to actually perform analytics on this data. And you can see every chart here has a little magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner. And when I click on that, I get, a, uh, I get a view of my chart across the top, and I get a table view here. And this table view is not a static table. This is actually a dynamic data analytics engine built right into your web browser. And when we, uh, when we take a look at that, what I see by default here in this view is I've got my exit extensions across the top and my exit reasons down the side. And I think to myself, you know, maybe that's not for me the best way to look at this. I want to I reverse those. In Bright Metrics, everything is just drag and drop. So I'm just going to drag those things and reverse them. And now this is a lot easier for me to read, right? So my exit extensions and who's answering calls and what's happening to calls versus, you know, my exit reasons abandoned versus abandoned, you know, if, if you don't know, is calls that call in and then hang up before anything happens to them forward always are typically calls on the weekends where you're, you have a rule set in your phone, your, your phone system to, to forward calls to another destination to forward no login agent, meaning there are, uh, people were supposed to be logged in, but they weren't logged in, so the calls were routed someplace else. And then here's my, all my agent calls. But I can see that, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change this to just look at last month. And so now we are f focusing on the month of November here. And what I have now is I have, uh, I had about 1,000 uh, and a, a 54 calls last month, or exactly 1,054 calls last month, and an average wait time, an average time they, wait, they waited something to happen in that call of 13 seconds. If I want to just focus on abandoned calls for a second, I can see I had 17 abandoned calls, so the first thing I notice is that's a very low abandon rate. Um, I probably uh, could, I could easily 
tweak my setting, tweak my work group here to raise that abandon rate and not lose anything in customer set, and I might significantly save in costs. And I also see that of the calls that abandoned, they were willing to wait a quite a bit longer than my overall average for the group. And so now I'm building a, a picture here, right, where I can say, look, I'm answering calls a lot quicker than my customers are willing to wait. If I wanted to move some agents around to only be in this group during busy times and instead have them on other projects during other times, I would not decrease my customer satisfaction rating very much because I could actually let this uh, average queue time creep up a quite a bit before I start seeing a significant rise in abandon rates. And so, but I do want to know a little bit about those abandoned calls and maybe for the sake of the demo, let's pretend that this is 170 abandoned calls instead of 17. And so first thing I want to know is when do I see more abandoned calls? So I'm just dragging hour of the day on and it instantly shows me that <coughs> The 12 and 1 o'clock hours are my busy times for abandoned calls. And so now I can say, hey, look, maybe <clears throat> I look at, st if this was significant, I look at staggering my lunch hours a little bit uh, to, to accommodate that. Or maybe instead of hour of the day, I want to see, well, what is my busy day of the week? And now I can see that Monday, in, at least last month, Monday was quite a bit uh, worse for abandoned calls than other days of the week. So maybe I want to know more about that. And I want to know if Monday is typically uh, that kind of a day. So I'm just going to drag my time slider out here. And now I'm coming in through uh, the middle of September through the end of November. And uh, we'll let this populate here. And I see actually over that time, Tuesdays are the busier times. And I can actually come up here and just isolate abandoned calls on this and see what days, and I see this big spike, which was a Tuesday in October where I had more abandoned calls by a long shot than other days. So I can, again, start to build a picture of, you know, is it an anomaly that Tuesday is my busy day? Um, or are Monday and Tuesday generally busier, in which case maybe I want to keep my same staffing levels or even add a staff level member to the group on those days, but the other days of the week, I can repurpose some of those people on special projects or something like that. So again, we're getting some really good uh, insights into staffing level metrics. Uh, this is all really good around customer satisfaction metrics. Let's say instead though, I want to look at some agent productivity or agent training metrics. I can do this. I can say, well, make this a little easier to see. I'm just going to look at transfer to agent calls. <clears throat> and so now I'm looking at uh, all the calls. Let me go back to last month here. All the calls last month <coughs> that, uh, that people took, and I can sort here and say, hey, Rosemary took 270 calls last month. I still have queue time, and I don't care about queue time on a per agent basis because that's not an actionable metric. You're not going to do anything about that. Let's measure the things that, uh, that we can do something about. So I'm going to remove queue time off of this report here. And instead, what I want to track is what's the average handle time on, for each agent? And so you can see this all updates live on the fly. The other thing I want to track is what percentage of calls do they take out of the queue and then transfer? That's another really great um, customer satisfaction metric. And you can, you can see that there are, depending on what kind of data you're looking for, there's hundreds of, uh, of metrics that you can track, and there is a lot of different ways to slice those metrics up. So right now I'm looking at uh, count of calls, time of handled, and percent of transfers, and I'm slicing those up by party name and exit reason here, and I'm creating a matrix that makes it really easy to look at. So now I can say, well, if I sort on percent transfer, <clears throat> I see here Fred takes some, um, you know, he's kind of right in the middle <clears throat> on the number of calls he takes. He has a shorter handle time than most other people in the group, than anybody else in the group, as a matter of a fact. And he has a substantially higher transfer percentage, 10% higher than the next one in the group. And so now I can, again, start to build some insights. Maybe 
Fred could use some more training. He's getting obviously the same kind of calls that other people are getting, but he's transferring 10% more than anybody else in the group here, or 11% more than anybody else in the group. Um, so, you know, maybe there's a training issue there, or, you know, since I see Fred have a substantially shorter handle time than other people and a high transfer percentage, maybe I've got an issue with Fred where he is taking the, uh, maybe he's taking the easier calls, but he's dumping off the more difficult calls to somebody else. And so we might want to know more about that. And if you kind of think about uh, from a from a contact center point of view, contact center reporting, uh, either small or large, what is the kind of the holy grail of reporting? And that's the ability to slice and dice this data up on the fly. And as you're doing it, follow breadcrumbs to determine the things that you need to know about and, and, and bubble up to the surface. And so that's what we can do is we can drill through this data and any piece of summary data that I want to look at, I can click on it and I will get the detail behind that data. And so now, uh, what did this say for Fred? 128 calls last month and I clicked on Fred and we're going to drill down and we'll see all 128 calls that Fred took last month and all the detail around them, the, the dates and times of calls, the, the caller ID, uh, the you know queue time and how long Fred had the call and I can actually sort here on transfer destination and I can see all the calls that Fred took out of the queue and then transferred on to someone else and where he sent those to and I can see he transfers a lot of calls to Shelly here. <coughs> I can also come over here to count of transfers and I see this three at the top. Well what that's telling me is that after Fred took this call out of a queue. He transferred it on to Shelly. Uh, this call happened uh, 11 to at uh, 7.35 in the morning. Uh, and here's the caller ID of that. And he transferred this call on to Shelly. Um, but that call moved around three more times after Fred had the call. So even after he transfers it to Shelly, it moves around some. So I want to take a look at that. And so I can click on any field for that call. And what I'll end up getting is a complete graphical cradle to grave report of everything that happened through the life of that call. And so if we follow this a little bit, we see, you know, the caller ID and the date and time of the call. And I can see here that the call was about four minutes long. The first thing it does is it hits, uh, it hits an, uh, uh, they call in directly, it goes to a route point and, and it follows through here to a, to a, to a, unknown type, this is a BCA probably, where Blanca uh, picks it up off of another ringing extension, she parks it back on that back line, and then she unparks it. She then transfers it off to the auto attendant, where it ends up at this other script. I happen to know for this customer, this script here is where they're collecting some digits uh, from, from the user. And then this is where we picked it up right here, where it went to that transit main work group because that dashboard we're looking at is for the transit main work group. And so we see that it queued up for five seconds there before Fred had that, took that call out of the queue and had it for 37 seconds. And you can see he was actually talking to them for 32 seconds. They put him on hold for five seconds. He then transfers it over to Shelly where it rings at her phone for 24 seconds before it goes to her voicemail and it hits uh, the voicemail server that's at her site, but then her voicemail is actually managed off of another server and that's why there was another party after Shelly. They were in voicemail for 15 seconds before they hung up, so they didn't actually probably uh, leave a message there in that 15 seconds, but you can see that you can get really deep here and you, don't, you certainly don't always need to get to this level but when you do, it's important that you can get here quickly and efficiently. And I'm actually going to copy this caller ID, and I'm going to make a note that this call was on 11-2 because I'm going to come back to this call in just a second. But uh, if you kind of follow what we did here, we started with this, I, I call this our five-mile high overview, where we're, where we're looking for trends and patterns and anomalies. And I can say, hey, I see this spike here, and I can drill down into what was happening at this particular point. 
or uh, you know, but once I do drill down and I can drill into any chart, but once I do, I can slice and dice up this data any way that I want, right? So I can, if I wanted to see just the calls that Fred took on Tuesdays during the 8 a.m. hour, I could, I could drill down into just that level uh, by just dragging those fields on here. But once I see any piece of information that I want to know more about, I can click on that information. One click gets me all the detail behind any piece of summary information. So we're never going to leave you with, hey, Fred took 128 calls. Trust me on that. We're always going to show you exactly where we got our data from. And we're, the, I, we're one of the only, if not the only, uh, reporting tool available for the short tail system that will, will that will do that for you and then any one click after that will get you everything that happened across any individual call not only that but if you happen to be using short tails call recording application we actually integrate tightly with that and and if this call was recorded you would actually see a play button down here at the bottom if you had permissions to listen to that call recording and you'd actually be able to play that call recording right from here within Brightmetrics or even download that as an mp3 file right to your system <coughs> for further analysis so if you needed to know what happened everything that happened on a call Brightmetrics can give you that entire picture of that and that's really important to be able to track down uh, sometimes and so Again, we can do the same kind of analysis that I showed you here on any kind of data in the short tail system, work groups, ECC, hunt groups, uh, system information like, um, like uh, trunk utilization or packet loss and jitter, or even inventorying things like uh, reporting like licensing, short tail licensing, switching uh, servers, and anything like that. Um, now, I, you don't always want to start with a with a dashboard. Sometimes it's just, hey, I, just show me the numbers. Just just get me the information that I need. And we can certainly do that too with our on-demand reporting. And that's more like the reporting you're probably used to seeing in the Shortel system, where we have our version of all 12 or 14 canned reports that Shortel comes with. But we also uh, have a lot of other templates. And in addition to that, those are just starting points with us. Everything is here is just a starting point. If I want to look at the Shortel Workgroup Queue Summary, which Shortel comes with, and if I want to run it for this, uh, for this organization, the first thing you probably notice is that happened in under one second is running that report. This is a 1,500-person organization I ran this for. And if you had to run this within Shortel today, it means logging into Director and then probably going and getting a cup of coffee after you start it and hopefully hoping that the report is done running when you get back. Uh, Bright metrics on these kind of reports is much more quick. And uh, and this is but but if you ran this in Shortel, it would look essentially exactly like this. But that's as far as you could go with it. For us, I can modify this now and I can say, hey, you know what, I don't really use Q transfer or overflow interflow in my uh, in my organization so let's clean this up I'm, I don't I don't want those here all I do is I go into edit mode and I drag those two fields off of the report and now they're gone maybe also instead of seeing just the work group name I want to subgroup that and show you where the calls are actually going within those work groups so I can take party name and subgroup that under work group name and now I can come down here because we were looking at that transit main work group. And here it is. And uh, I see Rosemary has taken 63 calls in the last seven days because this report is run for the last seven days. I can run it for any time period. And I can still drill down into those calls that Rosemary took and drill even further down to a cradle to grave individually on any one of those calls. So whether it's a uh, a chart and dashboard situation or you're running just a text-based report, you still have those same um, drill through and analytics capabilities uh, that, that, you, that you have any place else in the system. Now I can save this report once I modify it and have something I want and I have my saved reports up here and I actually got Jim's work reports here and here's my work group summary reports. 
what can I do with this report once I save it? Well, I can obviously run it anytime I want for, you know, one work group. Maybe I only want to run it for that transit main work group. So let's find that and run it just for that work group. Or maybe I want to run it for, you know, last month for that transit main work group only. And so I can I can come in here and do anything I want with this. Or I can uh, I can say, hey, I also might want to share this report with somebody else in the organization. And I can share this report with anybody with whatever permission levels I want to give them. And I can do the same with charts. So now if you've got a manager of a particular call center or a particular group of people and you only want them to be able to see information around those uh, work groups or those people and not be able to build a report or modify a report to show uh, what reports or what calls the CEO of the company is making, you can absolutely set that up. The permission levels are very granular. And I can also share these, or I'm sorry, I can also schedule these reports for automatic delivery. And I'll go to a different one here where I have some. And I can, we have a really unique scheduling engine because we can create one report and that report can then be uh, have multiple schedules against it. So I can see that uh, JK here, she gets a, a, this, this report at 12 a.m. every day of the week uh, for the previous day, and it only covers these three users, but she also gets the same formatted report at 12 a.m. Uh, every Monday for the, that's a weekly summary instead of a daily summary around the same users, but I could send a, another schedule to different users, to covering a different set of users, uh, you know, and do anything I want. And not only that, but maybe she wants her daily reports in a PDF format, but she wants her, uh, her weekly reports in an Excel format. So I can create one report now, and just by tweaking the filters on that report, uh, send it, have multiple schedules to send it to whoever needs it on whatever schedule they need it on with only the information that they should see on it uh, in whatever format that they want to see it in. Uh, now I said I'd uh, come back to that one call that we looked at. And so maybe the scenario here is you get a caller who calls in and says, boy, I called in on, uh, on November 2nd, uh, and we can select that day here from the date pickers. And I, I, I spoke to somebody, but I can't quite remember who it was. Can you help me out? and I can put in any portion of that caller ID and any, port, any date range here and run the report. And what we'll see here then really easily and quickly is all the times that that phone number called in during that time range. And I can actually see they called in three times on that day. They called in at 7.32. They called back one minute later at 7.33. And then they called back at the end of the day at 5.09. And I can see, you know, who they spoke to here. And I can actually click on all three of these calls and right next to each other get those cradle-to-grave reports on what happened with any of them. So I see here that uh, the call came in uh, and Blanca transfers it over to a work group, but it gets forwarded off to an auto attendant where they waited for 18 seconds and then hung up. That was their first call in the morning. Uh, here's the next one that we saw here where it was uh, one minute after that. They called immediately in after this and went through all this and, again, didn't leave a message for, for Shelly. Uh, and then they called in at the end of the day, and they called directly to Barbara. Barbara actually spoke with them for uh, three minutes and 18 seconds and then completed the call. So they did end up talking to Barbara. So if they were looking for somebody of who they'd talked to before, you'd probably say, great, let me get you over to Barbara here. And you can get that really quickly and really efficiently, where that's something that's much more difficult to do uh, without a tool like Brightmetrics. Again, any kind of reporting uh, that you like, um, even things around uh, inventory, right? If I want to know one thing, you know, uh, we could do licensing and I could show you one thing that's hard to find in, in Shortel is who's using all the, all my licenses. So if I look at a license usage summary, uh, it shows me all my Shortel licenses. And now I can say, well, look, I want to know, you know, my soft phone licenses. I can see I'm using 51 of those, but who's using them? That's a tough thing to do in, in Shortel today. 
But if I click here on soft phone licenses, or I could just run a report that says who's using my soft phone licenses, but I clicked here to drill down through, and it's going to tell me all the people that are using soft phone licenses, the, the, the names, the extension, the site that they're at, uh, everything that I would want to know about that, or you know who's using my mobility licenses or anything like that. Um, another thing that is uh, troublesome to, to try to figure out in Shortel, where are all my DID numbers pointing? Well, we have reports around that, so I can run a DID allocation report, and I can show you where every single uh, direct number you have is pointing and who it's pointing to. And I can even come up here and sort on destination type. And if you want to know every auto attendant or every DID number that points to an auto attendant menu, uh, here we, uh, we, we, can, we can see right here uh, all the auto attendant members, the numbers that point to them, et cetera. Or maybe instead, I want to show I'm excluding my unassigned, but maybe I only want to show my unassigned. Show me what unassigned numbers I have uh, so I can assign the next available one. So I'm going to say only show me my unassigned numbers, and I'm going to run this again. And so now when you're adding a new user to the system and you want to give them the next available DID number, if you have a lot of blocks of DID numbers in the Shortel system, it's really hard to track down what the next available number is. But if I come here and sort on this, now I instantly know right there that is the next available DID number that I have. So uh, not just call reporting, but anything in the Shortel system, we can give you reporting around it. I don't see any, uh, I, I, that's a lot of me talking. Again, I went really fast here. The goal here is not to, you know, give an all-encompassing, this is everything that uh, Brightmetrics does, but, uh, but the goal is to really um, get you guys interested in understanding your own system better and, and the ability to then track down these kinds of things in, in, uh, about your own company. And again, Vertex can get you signed up on a free trial. It only takes about 10 minutes. You can use the trial for a few weeks uh, before you have to make any kind of a decision to use it. If nothing else, use the trial to get some information around your own company. And, and there's no obligation to purchase at all. So uh, I don't see any questions. If there's any questions that come up, or, or Jeff, if you want to chime in uh, here, um, I, that, that's kind of my presentation, and I'm happy to, to answer any questions. Or, or, or Jeff, I know you've got some more things to, to take a look at as well. Yeah, and Jim, I appreciate that. some great information, uh, very powerful reporting tool. I'm going to go ahead and, and pull the presentation mode back, um, and everybody should be seeing my screen now with Jim's picture on there. Um, and what we've talked about, we talked about having another offer for you, um, and also we're going to open it up to Q&A here. If you have any questions about the offer, uh, Jim's uh, you know, company, Bright Metrics, or anything with Vertex related, we'll definitely open it up for Q&A here in just a moment. But the offer we have, and Jim already hit on that, there's a free 21-day trial uh, at Bright Metrics, the www.brightmetrics.com. If you sign up uh, between now and the end of the year, uh, and you run through the trial, you like what you see, and you want to sign up for the service, Jim's offering uh, up two months free with a 12-month commitment. So that's, a, that's a, a double the standard offer that he normally does. So we're actually getting some great benefit on there. So keep that in mind. Go out again, visit www.brightmetrics.com, sign up for your free trial, test it out for yourself. Is it something you think you like? Uh, let us know. We're definitely happy to help you here at Vertex. So right now, I'm going to uh, unmute everyone and see if there are any questions for uh, myself or Jim. Yeah. Just got everybody here. Bear with us one sec. Okay, everybody is unmuted. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask them now. Anyone at all? All right. Looks like I did a good uh, job. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and close the those back down again.